Gosh, we're just gonna go into the interrogation room. It's not you're not under arrest or anything. I just need to I, let you know that. It's and so I, I'm, it's I, but I'm but I'm not free to leave at any time, right? Or how does this work? You're free to leave at any time. Oh, but why why did you tell me I was forced to come here? You said I didn't have a choice. Huh? Yeah, you didn't have a choice. Come on in. Well, then how am I free to leave at any time if I don't have a choice? I mean, it's in your best interest you have this conversation with me. Okay, but I'm not forced to have it. You kind of are. Am I or am I not? It's a yes or no answer. Yeah, you're forced here. Am I? Yeah, so I'm forced. I'm forced to be here. I cannot leave. Yeah, yeah, come on in. I, I just want you to say that. I just want you to say to me that I'm forced to leave. This day, I cannot leave. Um... You know, some people might say you're forced to be here. And will you? Leave. Are yes, you? Uh, would you say that I am forced to be here? I cannot leave. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I mean, would you say you're forced to be? here? Hey, Harry. Uh, are I think, you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I think. I mean, Prince being kind of weird. I don't know if I'm forced to be here or not. He's being very unclear. But uh, yeah. Where are you at right now? It's unclear uh, about Mission what Row? I said. Uh, where in Mission Row? Interrogation. Oh my god, how the fuck did he get you down I mean, there? do you want to leave, Mr. Lingberg? Uh, can I leave, Mr. Prey? I mean, you can ask me. I mean, do you want to leave? I'm asking you if you want to leave. If I want to leave, can I leave? I mean, I'm asking you if you want to leave. Though. Right, and I'm asking you, can I leave if I want to leave? I mean, you can leave if you want to. All right, I'll leave. All right, well, I'm going to have to be holding you for 24 hours for investigation then. What? So now you're forced to stay. So you weren't forced to stay before, but now you're forced to stay. All right, let's do this then. Oh, yeah, I'm forced to stay right, for perfect. 24 hours. I'll talk to you later. Well, you're forced to... Right. I mean, this until I'm done with you. This until we have this conversation. Wait, why did you say 24 hours then? Because it's up to 24 hours. Oh, starting see. now. All right, let's go. Well, starting once I send you in. So why don't you take a seat, Mr. Lingo? Nah, I'm staying up. It's fine. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let me just get the equipment set up real quick. Gotcha, this conversation is going to be recorded. I hope you don't mind. No, that's fine. Perfect. Perfect. I bet someone really tangled these fucking wires up last time. Yeah, you would okay. think we would go wireless by now. All right, let me just hit that button. All right, perfect. It's recording. I'm by a bit, the way, but yeah, I do want to provide more RP second. for Pred here, we'll but I, I, I really don't have time for this. All this right, is like Mr. the worst Lindbergh. possible time to. Uh, All right, so uh, you don't want to take a seat with me? No, no, I stand. Gotcha. Um, well, I'm Sheriff Kyle. Why Pred, did he want that on recording? That's it is 11.16 a.m. on August the 2nd, 2021. And uh, I have Leslie Lingberg with me. Leslie Lingberg, can you uh, state your name? Just so it's on record coming from you. Leslie Lingberg. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Want to tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm from South Korea. I uh, now, Before we yeah. do continue... Uh, you do have the right to remain silent. Anything you do or say can and will be used sauce. against you in the court of law. You have the right to have an attorney present during questioning. If you can't afford one, uh, one will be provided for you by the state. Do you understand your rights? Mm hmm And you need a cough drop, by the way. Yeah, yeah, give me a second. Uh, give me a second. I'll fix it. No, I don't need water. It's fine. <clears throat> Hopefully he doesn't hold me here for too long, man. I really, really, really don't want to miss talking to Harry and Lamb. <clears throat> I would, should be good now, be Mr. So Lingberg. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no worries. So, so everything, I sound fine now, Mr. Lingberg? Just making sure. Yep, 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 you sound fine. All right, got you. So, um, I'm sure you're aware oh, that a fuck. few days ago, Basim Shaheen was murdered, the deputy mayor. I'm aware that uh, he was uh, he was one of your guys. I'm aware that he was. From what I've heard, Mr. Lingberg, is that. Well, first off, are you aware of the murder? I am now. You're you're. So this is your first time hearing about the murder. No. Or is this the first time? Oh, so it's so you were aware prior then. So you've been aware of the murder for some time. Yes. Um. When were you first aware of the murder? Yesterday. Yesterday, mm -hmm. man. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, so what I've heard is that Basim Shaheen was your guy. That's what I heard. I heard that this guy was like your guy. I heard you guys were close. Okay. I mean, are you going to confirm that? Were you guys close? Uh, in what regard? What regard? Any regard. Uh, you have to be a bit more specific than that. We weren't... Well, it depends Were on... Were you close in business? Uh, yes. Were you close as friends? Mm, no. You weren't close as friends? I don't have many friends. I don't think I have any friends, honestly. Mr. Mr. Bassam considered you, um... You know, you were on his emergency contacts list. Mm hmm I think you were important to him. Yes, I was. Wait, so you were important to him? Yes, but that does not automatically mean we were friends. Okay, I got you. So important in terms of, like, making business, making yes. money. Um, you don't think you have any friends? Uh, uh, not from my point of view. Other people might see me as their friend, but I don't like to keep friends. What about Cerberus? What about Dean Watson? It's business. What about Lang Buddha? Business. Business? Just business? Nothing, nothing personal? Just business? Yep. That's sad, Mr. Lingberg. Yeah, I choose to live my life like this. I'm quite content. Do you know any of the <laughs> details surrounding the murder of Basim Shaheen? Um, I did get sent a subpoena, so I know nice. everything that's said on the subpoena. Nice. Got gotcha, you. So Ooh. the... You got subpoenaed for, uh, I talked to Bundy, uh, phone records, right? Mm-hmm. Bundy has also interviewed me, already interrogated. Oh, Bundy talked to you? When did you talk to him? Yesterday. Are you not aware gotcha. of this? Um, we're coming together in a couple, I think, six or so hours to kind of condense everything down. I see. So you might be asked a few questions that you've already answered, Mr. Bundy, but I would, uh... I would respect that you still answer the questions. Of course. So, um, what, what could you conclude from your interview with uh, Senior Officer Bundy? Uh, well, I'm, I don't understand the question. What are you asking? I mean, what, what kind of conclusion are you drawing from that interview? Was it, a, was it a good interview in your opinion? Yes, it was very pleasant to talk to. Am I pleasant to talk to? Yes, I would say so. Perfect. That's what, you know, not a lot of people would say that, Mr. Lingberg, and I appreciate a good compliment. Of course. Do you need anything to drink? No, no. Do you need I'm anything good. to eat? No. Want me to... Hmm. Nice. Want anyone to wash your car while you're down here? No, no, it's all good. Ooh. What happened yesterday? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, what happened yesterday, that incident with... Uh, what's his name? That, that guy you held up. Oh, that. Yeah, I lost a lot of money on the Nasdaq. I kind of going went a bit crazy. But then I went realized as I did it, that it was kind of necessary. But then it was too late, so I got sent into prison for a bit, and then I got out. Gotcha. I saw you pleaded guilty to that charge. Yeah, of course. I mean, I did it. I mean, um... Here's the thing, Mr. Lingberg. Don't you think it's kind of strange? Basim Shaheen gets murdered. You're out of town. You come back, and you hold a man up at Mission Row. Essentially across the street from the police department. I mean, yeah, I, well, it depends on what you mean by strange. It's a bit, uh... I mean, strange, I mean, I think it's coincidental. All right. Where, uh, where were you the last few days? Uh, I've been, uh, I've, well, I've been in my apartment. Sweeping. Wow. Since... It's a long nap. Friday? No. Uh, th since Thursday. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, do you know anything about the details of the murder? I was given a subpoena, and I know what was said on the subpoena. Um, so, I'm not asking about the subpoena. I'm asking what you know about the murder. Right. What was on the subpoena is what I know. Okay. Well, what do you know then about the murder? Um, can I look at the subpoena? Because I can't remember exactly what it said. You can look at whatever you want. All right. One second. Uh, so it says here that he was executed at close range on Chumash P off of Great Ocean Highway by M70 AK-47 style automatic gunfire. Due to the nature of the close range execution combined with the lack of any signs of struggle or restraint, 
In addition to the lack of any reported kidnappings, Ooh. it is the belief of the Unified Police Department that this murder was committed by someone with personal or business connections with Basim Shaheen. Yeah, you, you know signed anyone... off on this, so you've seen this as well, huh? Yeah, I've seen it, but I need to hear it from you. I need to know what you know. Ah, I see, okay. You know, especially on recording. Right, right, right. Um, Makes sense. So here's a question. Um, do you know who killed Bassam Shaheen? Do I, do I know who killed Bassam Shaheen? Is that, is that what you said? Yeah, do you know who killed Bassam Shaheen? No. Do you have any idea who killed Bassam Shaheen? No. Nope, you don't, you don't think, you don't have any idea, the slightest, the slightest idea. Did you, you guys were close, though. You guys did a lot of business. Yes, we did I business. Mean, okay. Did Bassam Shaheen have any enemies that you know about? Uh, no, not really, honestly. I, uh, the thing, uh, me and Bassam's relationship, uh, was me meeting up, talking about business, and then him going off and doing his things with his friends. Okay, I mean, he lived a pretty, uh, he lived a pretty high-class lifestyle, didn't he? Depends on who you ask, that's relative. I mean, he had like a, I heard a, I heard, I heard a story about him throwing a party. And literally, he bought out the entire Mirror Park Tavern of liquor for the party. $40,000 worth of liquor for one party. Wow. Wow, that's impressive. I mean, yeah. I mean, sure, everything is relative. Do you know anything about, like, the events that led up to, um, like, do you know anything about the last time that he was seen alive? Uh, all I know is I, I received a text message before he died, presumably. That I have submitted you know, in the subpoena. Perfect. Do you know anything about him being billed in court for half a million dollars the other day as well? The day of the murder? Uh, yes, I, I did know that he, uh, he, got, he got sent to prison. But do you know that he was billed, uh, held in contempt of court for half a million dollars? Uh, I don't think I, I knew that, no. Yeah, so I'll fill you in. Essentially, he was at a court case, right? He got held in contempt of court by Judge Wayne Ardson, Justice Ardson, for half a million dollars. Damn, that's a lot of money. Yeah, half a million dollars. He really pissed that judge off. Hmm. That's crazy. I kind of think, yeah, yeah. And then a few hours later, he was dead. Man, maybe the judges are going unhinged. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. I mean, do you think Judge Hardson killed him too and put him in crippling debt? Or, I mean, half a million dollars may not have been a lot to him, but do you think that, like, that wasn't enough for Judge Hardson and then he killed him? I have no idea. I don't know Judge Hardson that well. Does that sound like something a judge would do, in your opinion? I, mean, I don't know. I've never really, I've had brief conversation with judges. I, I can't judge that character. I don't know. Okay, I got you. But you don't think a judge would murder somebody, right? I don't know. People do crazy things. I don't know. I can't. I don't. I can't answer that yes or no. I don't know what I think. People do do crazy things. Did you know that? Um, you know he was originally going to be held in prison for a while, but he got released by the judge, right? Mm hmm. You know who picked them up from the prison? I know. Uh, Andy Jones and Lars Haverford did. You know Bjorn, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, they picked them up from. Why the is prison he giving me all this information? And um. They took him down Why to the courthouse and retrieved that he knows his belongings. This. I thought that was a nice gesture. Yeah. Yeah, very kind of them. Yeah, and then somewhere in between that spot, between going to the jail, going from the jail to the courthouse to Otto's Autos, they also pulled his fucking fingernails off and tortured him. Can you believe that shit? Oh, that's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, they tortured the fuck out of this guy. From what I've heard from multiple people, they said that Andy Jones tortured him. Uh, so let's maybe put it on. Maybe put it on uh, emotes. That he literally honestly, outright so said that he nobody was tortured like, by knows. Andy Jones. Can you believe that? The former mayor, Denzel Williams' wife, uh, her and Bjorn just fucking tortured this guy. Pulled off three of his fingernails and shit. Some sick shit. That's insane! Wow. Yeah, 
I couldn't believe it either. I always thought she was so sweet. What do you think of Andy Jones? Andy Jones? Yeah. You're asking what I think of her, what I know about her. I'm asking what you think about her and what you... So first, we'll start off first. What do you think of Andy Jones? Um, well, she, She's a lady like any other lady in the city. She doesn't stand out that much. Gotcha. I mean, but uh, she was she did used to be the mayor. She did two terms as the mayor. Yeah, she did. She did. Yeah, um, I'm under the impression she actually works for uh, your buddy Dean Watson. Does she? Yeah, yeah. She's like, um, uh, let me just like get the find out exactly what it is. Hold on mm -hmm. for a second. Yeah, she is the um, CEO of the St San Andreas State Contracting uh, business. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. That your buddy, Dean Watson, is... I have, oh, There's a lot of businesses here. Yeah, we um, do facilitate a lot of businesses in the city. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the owner of this business. Mm -hmm. Seems like they have a bit of a connection there, you know? I mean, they work in the same business, sure. Yeah, but I mean, it's different. I mean, she's the CEO of this major con con uh, construction company, and he's the owner of it. So, I mean, he had to have... It's not like she was forced into that position. He he picked her for that position. All right. A woman who, who, who allegedly... Yeah, I guess you're right. I shouldn't say she did, but we all know. We both know she did it. She tortured this guy with, with <laughs> Lars Haver, Bjorn, uh, he's and... Uh, you know, so how do you, how do you feel sure. about Andy Jones, like as a person? What do you what do you know about her? Uh well, I know that she was mayor. Um, what else do I know? She uh, she has a moped that she bought it. Uh, I don't. Well, I think she bought it at PDM at some point. Um, yeah, Scooty. Yes, yes, that's it. Um, nice. what else? Um, she, she used to hang out at the bar sometimes, right? She probably did. I mean, the, you mean the, when you say bar, you mean the Mirror Park Tavern? Right, that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, she is a member of HOA and they are her goons. Well, hello, how you doing, dude? Good to see you, man. They're the mayor's goons. I've heard that around the city I a see, bunch I of times. She has goons. Damn. Is Bjorn one of her goons? Sorry, Lars Haverford, a.k.a. Bjorn. Is he one of her goons? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? No, I wouldn't know. Hmm. Okay. Do you know anything about Lars Haverford? No. Bjorn? I'm not, I'm not close with that they individual. No. He's like a role-playing LARPer guy. I'm aware of who it is. I just don't know him that well. You don't know him that well? Have no. you ever met him before? Yes, I have met him. What's your impression of him? Well, kind of like, uh, you know, he seems very, um, I don't know, what do you want to say? He's, he's, he's just a guy. Yeah, just your impression of him. Yeah, just uh, like any other guy. Like any other guy. Any other guy, but yeah, this uh, this other guy that was involved in torturing Basim Shaheen. Sure, but you were asking me about guy. my impression. My impression of Bjorn is that he is like any other guy. But like I said, he's just like, just like so. I, he's just like any other guy. Well, I'm just letting you know that you know this guy did some sick shit to yeah. your number one, Andy Jones and Bjorn. Multiple people have confirmed this. I know, I know this almost is is fact <laughs> that Bjorn and Andy tortured your number one guy. Yeah, that's crazy. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, what's crazy is is that a guy like you can't even protect your number one. Are you sure you're safe? Uh, from what exactly? From what? I mean, who knows? Maybe they're coming for you next. Yeah, maybe. I guess we'll see. But, but what I just don't get, though, Mr. Lingberg, is how does someone as, as rich and powerful as <laughs> He's you... He's really trying all the right? angles, huh? Your number one guy gets tortured. You <laughs> He's know nothing really, really about trying, it. huh? I mean, are you really as rich and powerful as you think you are if people are getting away with torturing literally the number one guy to Leslie Lingberg? Yeah, you're right. The, the, the number one guy to you got tortured. Yeah, maybe I should change profession, huh? 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. You know, I find that as a shock that your number one guy, this guy is number one to Leslie Ling. He is he is admittedly your henchman that I heard. This is your fucking guy. <laughs> I've been and he gets I'm, tortured I'm for, for, for 20, by Andy 26 Jones hours, chat, by the way. Bjorn. Uh, by <laughs> Andy Jones? Well. Andy fucking Jones tortures your number one and some <laughs> LARPer is helping her do it. Can you can you believe that? What does that look like from the outside? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's crazy. Andy Jones? Yes. I know. Crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. That is just fucking crazy to me. Yeah. So you mean to tell me you didn't know anything about this? Nice. Uh, like I said, I uh, knew what I read on the subpoena. How much did you pay them to do this, Mr. Lingberg? I've not paid anyone anything. Gotcha. I mean, so did did you get them to do it for free? Did they owe you a favor? What did Bassam do to you? I haven't been in the city since Thursday. That's a good alibi to have. Sure. Yeah, it's a great alibi. Mm -hmm. So then you had no involvement, no knowledge or I anything. Have a mean you just, you just, in you just come out of your apartment, find out your number one guy's been done in. Uh, yeah, it seems so. Did you know that your number one guy, uh, uh, Bassam, owed Denzel Williams He's money really about trying. like uh, a week and a few days ago? There was a little altercation between them that uh, that was documented. He's that really was reported trying. to me. No way, you know, man. Really. Denzel Williams yeah. beat the shit out of him. He's because really he owed trying. Him He's for knocking right now, man. <laughs> yeah, at Autos Autos, he beat the shit out of him. Damn. Yeah, the mayor beat the shit. Out of Bassam, his own deputy mayor, your number one guy. Did you know anything Holy about that? Shit. That's crazy. It is crazy. Did you know anything about it, though? And about what exactly? Nice. About Bassam o owing Denzel money. No. Ooh. <laughs> right? And then, you know, a week or so later. Now, let me tell you how things look like from my perspective. All right, Mr. Lingberg. <laughs> now, I really don't think that you're involved at all all right i want you to know that oh i'm really telling you this right now really, i don't think you had anything really to do cool. with it. we're doing you this have. we're doing maybe this maybe you did know i find it hard to believe yeah. that a guy like you <laughs> okay. your number one gets killed and you don't have some kind of say in it <laughs> you backed him for mayor you backed denzel for mayor you literally funded this guy's campaign you came down to mission row talking all your praises about this guy meanwhile he, he's beating your goddamn uh, number one like uh, he's an abusive husband. He's a tr like he's a pimp trying to collect money from one of his fucking hoes. <laughs> <The pimp. laughs> you don't know anything about this? Well, I do. I know now. Yeah, you know now, but before that, did you know anything about it? I knew the stuff that I was sent on the subpoena. But what I'm asking is, before you got that subpoena, were you aware of this kind of... Any type of owing of money between Bassam and Denzel? All I knew when I woke up yesterday was what I read on the subpoena. Man. The guy you endorse for mayor is owed money by his deputy mayor, who is your number one guy. How did he get the job? Like, what was the relationship between Bassam and Denzel? I'm not sure, actually. I don't know. I, I didn't spend much time with him. So you back this guy's campaign, your number one guy gets in as the deputy mayor, arguably one of the most politically powerful people in the city. And you mean to tell me that he just got that by pure coincidence that and you were just funding that out of the kindness of your heart? Uh, I didn't say that. OK, so uh, t break it down for me a little bit. Break down what exactly? What part of what you said? What I want to know is, how did Bassam get the job as deputy mayor? I'm not sure. I, you would have to ask Denzel about that. Didn't have anything to do with you massively endorsing the campaign, doing your... You know, you're a showman, Mr. Lingberg. You would come in here to the PDR meetings, and, you know, I fucking hate Denzel's guts. I think he's a murderer. I think he's uh, a real piece of shit. But you almost convinced me to vote for him. Well, I'm good at what I do, I guess. You are good at what you do, Mr. Lingberg. That's why I find it so hard to believe that you know nothing about this, that you're standing here right in front of me lying. 
You know, you know just as well as I do that Denzel had Andy <laughs> Jones and Bjorn uh, do in your guy. Maybe Denzel wasn't there, but Denzel definitely had him killed. I wish I could be on, on Kelsey. We, we know this. this I know I that you know this. There is no way that you do not have any knowledge about anything that's going on. I find that ridiculous to believe. There's no way. And over something so small, why'd they kill him over 200K? What's 200,000 to you? What's 200,000 to anyone? You know, in your little group, I'm sure they could have helped out Bassam. Did Bassam come to you about Owen Denzel money? No. Nope. Never. He never came to you, not even once. No. Nope. Man. You know, this... I mean, it, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I have no other way, uh, you know. But, I mean, this guy... Man, he was your friend. Who? And he got killed on your watch. But you guys were... You guys were close. No, no, no. That'd we, be like we, me we, losing we, my we, undershare. We spoke about this in, in, the, in the beginning of this conversation, right? Yeah, I know. But, I mean, you guys were close in business. We were close in business. Is it inconvenient to you that this, this guy gets clipped? Yes. Because I heard from Marlo that it was inconvenient to him. Yes, of course it is. I mean, it can't be easy to replace a guy like that. I mean, he was the... Chief financial, uh, yeah, chief financial officer for multiple companies. This guy was working the books damn near fucking everywhere, Mr. Lingberg. Right. Then he gets killed over $200,000? Like a do tortured? And then murdered like a fucking animal? That's some sick shit. That sounds crazy. The guy, yeah, the guy that you endorse for mayor... Literally gets his fucking wife to torture a man with a LARPer. <laughs> you know nothing about this? Ah, uh, well, I, I know what you've told me. Yeah. And did you give the go-ahead? To what? Did you give the go-ahead? You know, did you, like, did you, like, say it was okay for them to do? To do what? To kill the, uh, uh, Bassam. Did you tell them it was okay? I haven't spoken to any of these people that you mentioned for a very long time. Uh, okay, so I get it there, Mr. Lingberg. You don't have any friends, all right? You, uh, you care about business more than anything. But, I mean, in terms of business, I mean, losing this guy had to fucking hurt you in some way. If Marlo's bitching to me about how you know, how inconvenient it is that Bassam died. I know this has to be a fucking terrible thing for you because this guy worked the don't, books don't, for every don't, business don't, you fucking don't, own. Don't compare me to Marlo. All right, I won't compare you to Marlo. Man, though. But can you imagine that? You're, <laughs> you know, you go, to, you go to court. You know, you're representing a client. You get held in contempt for 500K and you get sent to jail. And just when you don't think your day can get any worse, you get tortured by some goddamn guy that wears cosplay armor and Andy Jones. And then you get murdered over such a minuscule amount of money. <laughs> Crazy story. I know. I know. But, it, but it's true, though, because that's what happened. You know, this, I, they, they pick him up from the prison. They, they, I don't know when they torture this fucking guy, right? But somewhere between going to the prison, going to the courthouse, and going to autos, autos, this guy's fucked up. This guy's literally calling his girlfriend, telling her, hey. He has to find something know, new. Like he, I'm probably never going to see you does, again. Does he, does no, he, he didn't say I'm he probably. He said, I'm never going to see me? you again. <laughs> is that, he is said that, that the goal to here? <laughs> Spirit, you believe God, that? Come on, man. Come on, man. That's crazy. It is. It is. And then... He gets tortured, and he goes to autos, autos. Nobody does a fucking thing. Nobody, nice. nobody does anything. <laughs> nobody tries to stop it. He outwardly tells a couple people that Andy Jones did this to him. Are they scared? Are people scared of Andy He knows Jones? a lot, though. He knows a lot, though. Uh, who, who do you mean by people? Nice. Everybody in the city or some people? People, like, yeah, are like, are like people who, like, are people scared of Andy Jones? I don't know. Are you scared of Andy Jones?
I'm not scared of Andy Jones. Well, then people aren't scared of Andy Jones. You would be one of the people, no? No, no, no. I'm asking if other people are scared of Andy Jones. I don't know. I don't know who. I don't. I don't keep a list of who people are scared for. Man, though, it's taken to autos, autos, tortured by Andy Jones and Bjorn, and then what? What happens? He gets taken to Chumash Pier, where he gets fucking murdered. He gets shot execution style with an assault rifle. <clears throat> Nobody does anything about it. Nobody does a fucking thing about it. Nobody tried to stop it at all. That's what I find is hard to believe. How come nobody interfered? All it took was one person to say, okay, listen, I'm going to call the cops, have them come pick you up. Nobody did it. All right. Do people respect you that little that they don't give a fuck about your number one guy getting murdered? By you know, Andy I mean, fucking uh, Jones of all people. In the same way that I don't keep a list of uh, who people fear in the city, I don't keep a list of who respects me. I'm not that minuscule. Well, we know they don't fear and respect you, Mr. Lingberg. Maybe that's all. Who knows? Who cares? They killed your guy. They killed your guy over $200,000. That's crazy. I know. It's nutty to me. They just fucking murdered him and tortured him. Over 200 k You probably make that. You probably made that since you've been standing here, you goddamn rich businessman. <laughs> what do you own? I mean, what do you got going? Let's see. Let's take a look. You got a long list, my man. Mm -hmm. You co-own the good company. You co-own Autos Autos. You're a co-owner of the National Paintball Association. You co-own OP. I don't know what this is. You're the owner of Lingcorp Mining. You're the owner of Cerberus. <laughs> uh, you're the owner of PDM. You own more businesses than I have ever walked into. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, you're a successful guy. <laughs> you're a successful guy that has a lot of influence. <laughs> and then people kill your number one guy like you're not shit. <laughs> Who did it, Mr. Lingberg? Who killed Bassam? Good question. I mean, I know who killed him, but I want to know, do you know who killed him? Um, I know who did it already. <laughs> well, then why am I here? Why are you here? Because we need to have a conversation. Okay. You know, Mr. Lingberg, I just can't get over it. You're not a bad guy, Mr. Lingberg. In fact, <laughs> you know, this uh this whole fucking unlawful imprisonment charge. A guy like you shouldn't have this on his record. You know, I can get that removed just like that. Nah, it's fine. I can just go to the courthouse and just get it removed. Nah, it's fine. Any judge will do it for me. That's okay. Let's see. D Toretti. And El Pond responded to reports of Leslie <laughs> Lindbergh holding up an individual hostage at gunpoint across from MRPD. It, I wonder if he's trying Upon to Upon just... arrival, D. Toretti instructed Leslie um... to let a woman go, to let the woman go, put the gun down and put his hand up, in which he complied. Yeah, I wonder if he's just, like, trying to... Why'd you hold her up again? Uh, how, hold her up? Um, her name's not actually listed in the report. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so why? So who was it you held up? I don't know. Who was it? I can't remember. Maybe uh, it's Toretti? I mean, you told me that there was some stuff going on at the start of this. Sure, yeah. And you told me that you held up a person because something went bad. So why'd you hold her up? You already told me in the beginning of this recording. You might as well just tell me now. You already said it. Well, I feel like you can spend some time rewinding the tape later. I mean, you can't just tell me for the sake of the conversation. You already did. Nah, I feel like it's better to probably move forward. Okay, we can move forward. Mm -hmm. So then you go. So let me get this straight. 
hold up a woman outside a mission row? Why'd you oh, hold her up thinks, outside a mission row? This is you could have literally done it anywhere else. You probably would have gotten away with it. He thinks this is the weakness. Uh, what's the question here exactly? I mean, why'd you, why'd you hold her up then at mission row? I don't know. It's a crazy situation, I guess. Explain it to me. Well, you... Why that place of, of all places? Um, can you... Well, you can read the report again. It's... If you want to. I mean, I can just talk to Dominic Thready, and you're right. I can check the beginning mm -hmm. of the recording. But, um... Man, that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. And <laughs> then, um... <laughs> he what would you do up in prison? Uh, I'm sorry? Said, what'd you do up at prison? I spent my time. Gotcha. What'd you do up at prison? I I guess I spent my time in prison. I, I waited for my time to, uh... To run out and then left. Okay. You didn't, like, go around the prison at all? Oh, I walked, yes. I used my legs. I walked around a bit. Gotcha. You, uh... You friends with anybody up at prison? No. Okay. So... You know, because I heard something last night that was a little that was a little odd to me. Mm -hmm. I heard that you were giving people money up at prison. Yes. And yeah, what were you giving them money for up at prison? So you were giving people money at prison after being sent in. I gave about five to sorry, fifty to one hundred thousand dollars to random people every day, especially now when I can throw cash on people. I threw uh, about four thousand dollars. On Toretti's not sick when I was getting processed. I threw money on a couple of prisoners when I was in prison with the cash that I had remaining on hand. And then later on when I left prison, I would throw $100,000 and threw it in the nut sack of the kid with dialysis who gambles at the casino. This is what I do, Mr. Pratt. Is it, is it a kid with dialysis at the casino? Yeah, I he's heard 14. about this guy. Yeah, yeah I threw $100,000 on his nut. Okay, that's a... Uh, huh. And so if we want to talk right. about why I'm throwing money, yeah, there's a lot to there's a lot to talk about. I, I, I do it all the time. But you can't throw two hundred k at Bassam Shaheen. You can give you can throw a hundred thousand dollars at Toretti's nutsack or throughout the course of a day, but you can't throw two hundred k to Bassam. Physically, can I can throw money at anyone I want, anytime. Got you, but why can't why can't you help your guy Bassam out? And I never said that I couldn't. So you could have. Well, I no, I was never physically restrained. But what do you mean, never physically restrained? Well, you're you're saying if I could have, yes, of course I could have. I could have given you money. I can I can wire you money at any w point in time. Would you have helped Bassam if he came to you? Sure. But he didn't come to you, though. That's what I said. Why wouldn't he go to you? I don't know. If he's in the hole, why can't he go to you? I don't know. Maybe you guys weren't as close as I thought then. I mean, I guess it was just a business relationship. Yeah, I mean, I'm not but... trying to, I'm not trying to be dick here. It's a prayer when I when I say it's just business, I mean it's just business. I'm not like Winnie Piston. I, I know you do. I know you mean it's just business. What do you mean like not like Vinny Piston though? What is that what does that mean? Well, exactly? Vinny Piston always says it's just business. It's nothing personal. But I stay true to that. Oh, okay, so he just says it and it's a lie, but you say it and it's truth. Who would you say is the realest businessman out of us two? <laughs> uh, out of me and you, or you no, and Vinny Piston? me and Mr. Piston. Oh, you 100%. Well, there you go. Nice. I arrest Vinny Piston. We, we arrest Vinny Piston all the fucking time. So you, though, you're a, you're a good guy. Well, proof is in the pot, ain't it? Exactly. You're a good guy. It really is business for you. You know, um, I was really hoping that we could get somewhere there, Mr. Lingberg, but... Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't I help we you probably, Yeah, we probably got as far as we can get. Yep. Um, want to go play some blackjack together? I can't, I can't. I got a business meeting, unfortunately. I, I would talk to you sometime, though. I really would. Okay. All right. Well, I want you to understand it's the same thing for me. This isn't personal. It's just business. No, I get it. But I, I get can tell it. you something that did seem personal. Mm -hmm. When... Denzel Williams, Andy Jones, Bjorn, who knows who fucking else. <laughs> Kill your number one guy, though. That seems pretty personal to me. That and that seems story. like a blatant dis disregard for, for you at all. That seems really personal. 
Ooh, crazy, you know, crazy it, story, that that wasn't business, story. I don't think. That was personal. <laughs> you know, um, you change your mind at any time. You have my number, and you know I'm always available. Of course, of course. But uh, I want to see you. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Do, you. do you know what would be a dream come true for me? Uh, I go down to the jail. I see Denzel Williams and Andy Jones holding hands. They're sitting in chairs. Each of them have one of those. They're each in an electric chair. You know, and you see. And then, and then there I am with the sponge, dipping it, putting it in the water, and then putting it underneath the cap of each one of them. And then, you know, God forbid, please. If, 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 if I would feel like I, I won the Audi down at the fucking casino if they said, Kyle Fred, you get to be the one to flip the switch on these people. Because I hate them so fucking much, Mr. Lingberg. I really do. But I think there's someone who hates them just as much, if not more than me. <laughs> He's not wrong. You! Yeah. I think you share the same disdain for these two individuals this that I do. This is a difficult part of being a cop. No if somebody doesn't want to cooperate and, and they're smart they with their words, it's, it is difficult. Guy. It's very difficult. It's kind of like um, He's dead. leaving trails. Your businesses you know, you aren't going to be thing. the same without this guy, and I fucking know it. You know how long it takes to train somebody. I just, to do I just shit? can't, I can't give Pratt anything. I really can't. They killed him. They murdered him. You didn't do anything about it. I was you didn't sweeping. even fucking know. I was, yeah, I, I know, but you didn't yeah. even know. That's crazy. Yeah, crazy that story. Is, that is nutty. Yeah, and yeah, nutty. <clears throat> I'm I'm kind of disappointed, Mr. Lingberg. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't help you. Uh, it's okay. It's all right. It's just, you know, I got a lot. Well, there's people watching now. Fortunately, I still need more. All right. Well, I wish you best of luck. I I appreciate that. I really do. If you hear anything, you'll get in contact with me, right? Of course. All right, nice. All right, because, nice. 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 you know, they start off by killing the goon. <laughs> maybe it was a message to you for all I fucking know. Yeah, who knows? And maybe it was a message that, you know, Lingberg, stay in your lane. <laughs> or some shit. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, me yeah, neither. Nice. Yeah, the guy that, you know, oh, you're right. We're just... Ooh. No, I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording now. We can get out of here. You can go to your business meeting. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Would you, Would you mind dropping me off at the casino? I'm feeling the itch to be a degenerate. Ah, of course I can drop you off. No problem. Perfect. I'm gonna be ending the uh, recording. This is Sheriff Kyle Pred, and we're gonna be ending this recording at 11:57 a.m. CST. We can turn off email. All right, perfect. Let me.